The Southern California housing market did it again. It broke the rules. What do you think the punishment should be? We are going to run through the numbers in the Southern California housing market report and stick around to the end for median price madness that we have never seen before. Yeah, it's true. We really have never seen this before. Hey there, Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. We have been helping buyers and sellers make the best actual and factual decisions in this crazy market. So if you're ready to dive into the single family and multifamily numbers, plus some median home price madness in LA, Riverside, San Diego, San Bernardino, Ventura, and Orange counties, hit that like button and let's get started. Here we go, taking a quick run through the single family and multifamily numbers where we pull the pending sales, new listings and sold listings. And there's an interesting trend that I'm gonna point out to you that has changed in this market. But first, let's take a quick look and we will see this across the board for all the counties. The numbers are down for new listings, pending sales and sold properties. Why are the sold properties down? Well, because pending sales were down in the past and new listings are down because sellers are deciding to hold on to their property. You're at two and a half to three percent. Why go out there, buy something else for even more expensive? and at a 7% plus interest rate. So that's what's going on there. So we can see in Orange County, even with demand way down low, that's properties going under contract, new listings are way down low. And that is why we can see that there are still multiple offers in Orange County. A couple of our recent listings, we've seen that. Uh, a listing in Irvine, I had six offers come in on that. And we went well over asking price in that particular one and closed in August. Moving into LA, look at the huge drop in the number of listings in 2018 over 8700 listings now we're just right at 5100 so just crazy crazy drop when you look at it uh, from a more normal market before covid here is another trend you need to look at and this is an important one. So typically this time of year, what happens to home prices, the median home price, and what happens to sales? Well, we start to see the numbers going down. Once we peak in the summer for median home price, we also peak with the number of sales in the summer, and then we start to see those drops through the holidays until we get to the next spring season. That is the typical seasonality of numbers. Now, what we can see, the number of properties that have sold versus the number of properties going under contract, when the sold is more than the number of properties going under contract, like we have in 2018 and 2019, that means the market is doing what it normally does seasonally, it's slowing down. So we had more pending sales before that turned into these closed sales. We're seeing those pending sales drop, no surprises. Then COVID hits and by that time, we had more pending listings than we had sold. So that meant the market was heating up in August of 2020 and heating up in August of 2021. We are starting to get to a more normal market, but still you can see the pending sales for 2022 were above the sold. We do have a flip here in LA for 2023, where we can see that flip in pending sales and sold. So LA is slowing down slightly, but those numbers are still very close together. And then you can see the gap between pending sales and new listings, that's close together. So that's an important point there, and we'll take a look at these further slides. Riverside, same trend, the number of sold is higher than pending sales. That means it's doing what it normally does, slowing down, then it flipped. And we can see that in Riverside that it actually is slightly higher than the number of properties it sold. So it's still a little bit warm in Riverside right now. And those numbers are close together for pending sales and new listings. San Berdu, similar trend where we're getting closer to the number of sold and number of pending sales. So that means we're doing a closer to what seasonally happens just at a lower rates. So lower rates of new listings, lower rates of pending sales. Ventura is a similar thing. We saw a huge uptick in number of properties going under contract in 2020. And then those numbers got closer together. And here, this is a slowing market. This is what it would look like. A normal seasonal slowing market is actually slowing faster than it was back in 2018 and 2019. The gap between the sold and pending sales has widened. So we will expect to see next month that that continues. There's going to be a fewer number of sold properties because there's a fewer number of pending properties and pendings turn into sold properties. No surprises. In San Diego, we can see it is starting to slowly return to that more seasonal trend. 
fewer number of properties going under contract than sold, but they're very close together. What's really close together are the new listings and pending sales, similar to 2021, which was a hot market. San Diego continues to defy national expectations for it to crash. It continues to chug along and wait to see the median home price numbers. And don't forget, we're real estate agents based in Southern California. Make sure you reach out before you make a move to buy or sell. Diving into the multifamily numbers, one of the few places where you get this data for Southern California, and we can see that it is still continuing to chug along in Orange County for multifamily. This is anything two units and larger that is being listed and sold through the MLS. And we can see the pending sales are up there if you look at the trend line 2018 there were fewer pending sales than this time of year and new listings are down so the pressure from rising interest rates which cuts into cash flow is still there but this actually seems like a somewhat normal market for oc multifamily other than the low listings moving into la and we can see the listings continue to drop pending sales low not as low as 2022 but they're low and there's more pending sales and closed sales. So this looks like a market that's starting to heat up slightly. We'll have to see how it plays out. This is a tough market with the rent stabilization ordinance and other ordinances that prevent landlords from increasing rents. For example, if you have an RSO building, you still can't raise rents in LA City until February of 2024 tough market for landlords in LA. Riverside, despite the high interest rates reducing cash flow, we can see that pending sales are up as compared to 2022, and they're higher than 2019, a more normal market. So things are moving in Riverside, which tends to be a market where there's a better return on investment. Things tend to trade at a higher cap rate, which is better for per the investor who's purchasing. San Bernardino, big drop in the number of new listings, 2023 half of the new listings we saw in 2018 big drop and demand is down as well uh, record low number of properties going under contract in san bernardino for this time of year we'll have to keep tracking to see where that number heads of course we'll see listings continue to stay low but it'll be interesting to see where pending sales go for san bernardino multifamily venter always all over the place inventory down that's new listings down and pending sales are down tough to make properties pencil and seven percent interest rate environment look at the consistency and the number of new listings that occur in august in san diego we double checked these numbers a couple times but you could see that 140 ish would be the number of new listings in August going for four years straight. Then it dropped in 2022 and it's starting to come back up in 2023. So you could set your watch to the number of properties that would be listed in August in San Diego, but that has changed. And we can see the demand did spike in 2021 but uh, it has since dropped to more normal levels. Median home price in Southern California is broken. It is not doing what it's supposed to do, and we're about to show you what I mean by that. So we're looking at the first of the three counties, OC, LA, and Riverside, and what do we see? We see month over month that they have actually gone up. This time of year, the median home price is not supposed to go up. It's supposed to go down. It happens every year as we get through summer, then into winter. Then we see a drop in the median home price. Peaks in the summer. Now, last year we peaked early. We peaked in April and we talked about that. But again, we're not supposed to be going up. So we're breaking the rules right now. And then there's more rules that were broken. Orange County is up 11% year over year. LA 3.2, Riverside 0.7%. So we're at a positive. And remember, we were at a negative year over year for a bit. The other thing that we've done in Orange County is we've exceeded the previous peaks. So everybody was talking about how uh, crazy things got in April. I was talking about how crazy it was in Orange County, it was a million ninety four for single family home, condo townhouse. That was the median home price. We are now above that. So we're a million one ten for the median home price. So we have exceeded the peak and we've exceeded the peak in a month when we're supposed to be going down. This is madness. And the other three counties in Southern California, they're breaking the rules too. They all need to be grounded. 
go to bed without dinner, whatever needs to happen when you break rules. Uh, you can see that month over month, that again, the price is up for the median home price month over month. It is not supposed to be doing this. It's supposed to be going down this time of year. As far as year over year, San Berdu is up 4%. Ventura is up almost 7%. San Diego, 10.8% year over year. Talk about crunching. How about crushing affordability when you factor in where interest rates are and prices continue to go up? It is lack of inventory and still a level of demand that's pushing prices up. And again, in San Diego, we go to the peak and we can see the peak for San Diego was about 871 and we are above that at 885. So San Diego has exceeded the previous peak. Both Orange County and San Diego, I saw always talking about sisters from different misters and all that. They have both exceeded the previous spike, the previous peak in median home price, breaking the rules everywhere. Let us know in the comments below what you think the punishment should be for breaking the real estate rules in the Southern California housing market. And let us know what you're seeing out there if you are shopping for a home right now or thinking of selling right now. Have you subscribed to our free weekly email newsletter? What the heck are you waiting for if you haven't? Comes every Sunday gently delivered to your email inbox with updates you need to know. And speaking of updates you need to know, make sure you check out this next video right here. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and we can't wait to hear from you.